fearful of the day's fierce heat and the dangers that lurked in the dark. And so it was in this half-remembered land that two children made their way, enraptured by its promise of adventure and oblivious to its lurking peril. The boy hummed to himself a hymn from his far-off home. His eyes inspected the soil between careful steps. All manners of treasure could be found here. In his right hand, he clutched a medallion for good luck, a symbol of his mother's faith. The girl, a year older, stood at the dry riverbed's lip, peering through a looking glass at the expanse ahead of them. She fancied herself a surveyor, encouraged by her successful career as an assistant gopher during her father's jobs in the outer states. An hour had passed, and before the two young adventurers, the skeletal remains of a titanic structure rose from weathered rock and migrating sand. Here, reed in the shade of hand-shifted earth and carved stone, a half-buried relief poked through the rubble. Upon its face, a time-worn carving depicted an eerie scene. Excitement and fear filled the children as they pressed closer to the monument. The boy looked at the carved figures. We should be careful, Mav. Mother said the elders left dangerous things here. Maeve's body shifted, curiosity and fear creeping in. What kind of things? Things that ate the old world. Zed looked to the massive gate before and above them. Where do you think they go? Mav grinned. Anywhere, I reckon. Da said some of the stars in the sky ain't stars, but other worlds. He reckons they used to be bridges between here and out there. Diving said he saw one on the moon. She pointed to the sky for dramatic effect. Cal, Shale's moon, was clearly visible, its figure dwarfing the horizon's mountains, even in the afternoon's blazing glory. Upon its distant face, great clouds of sand billowed, etched by flashes of silent lightning. The afternoon sun glimmered queer, its colors shifting but for a moment. Seconds passed, then a strange energy flickered around the gate, its hulking form humming as the current worked its way through the winding grooves. The children stopped cold, looking at the massive structure. Within the gate's ring, wisps of an ethereal energy rippled and congealed. As suddenly as it had stirred, the gate grew silent, its energy bleeding into the tired ground the warm colors fading to metal's cold gray. The two children stood still, listening. Only the restless winds and hissing sands answered them. Though the expanse around them lay barren, they were no longer alone. <laughs>